All right, so we have somebody that wants to know how do you uh, test these batteries? And the first thing we do with them is I set this group up here and this group up here in, uh, in uh, parallel. And what I did was I discharged this group here into this group over here using my power supply. So we have our negatives all hooked together as we see here. And our positives, I'd taken that off of there. And that's where I put our power supply. And this battery was lower than this to begin with. So I could set my power supply to pump the electricity, what electricity that was left in this one back into this one and get this guy full. And of course that means watching both batteries and making sure that uh, this one doesn't get too low and this one doesn't get too high. And when I got to the point where this guy was empty, I kept on charging this one and I charged them all the way up to uh, 4.25 per cell. Uh, and now I'm in the discharging process. And what I'm doing is I'm discharging this battery into here and I'm using my amp hour gauge to uh, measure how much power I'm taking out. And you see right now we're, we're, we're charging the one at 68 amps. And when I first hooked him up, he was about 200. And now he's, as, as the voltage is rising on one and lowering on the other, and we can see that voltage here of the two, the low voltage group is all in this group here, and the high voltage group is all in this group here. Now this is our simp bms that we got all hooked up with our relays and everything else and our relays will control this big contactor so we could set it so that if anybody got too low or too high uh, the bms would turn the battery off uh, and i got to come up here to cut it and this Getting to, to work this Symbian mess is a whole other video, which that's not on this. There we go. So we see our two groups. One is, well, one was all the way up to 4.2, module one, and module two is now coming up, and he was all the way down to 2.75, and now he's coming up. So while this is happening, We've got our amp hour gauge that's measuring amps here. I also set him up for 300 to start with. So we've already done eight amp hours transfer from one end to the other. And we'll just uh, let that go. That's how we keep track. That's how we figure out how good these batteries are. We'll know how good this is if everything can come out of him and we have 250 amp hours we'll say that battery's perfect. If we get 200, we'll say he's good enough, even 175. And same thing with this, when we're putting the amperage in. Now putting the amperage in is not the same as taking it out, but it does give us some idea. If this guy was all the way empty and we put 200 in, we could say, well, he looks like he will hold 200 amps. That isn't that good. Uh, so, that's our setup. You see pluses to pluses. Now we got to have cable that can handle this kind of amperage. And this cable here, of course, will. This one here doesn't feel like it's getting too hot. A little warm, but whatnot. And our, our amp hours are, are clicking down in our amps there. Now part of what's controlling our amps is this wire here across our contactor. If I engage our contactor, our amps would go up quite a bit, which I'll do that later on. Right now, I don't want it charging too fast. Uh, the good thing with this setup is that on the discharge with the two batteries, you don't have to worry about one overcharging the other or one draining the other down too far because the two of them are going to keep each other in check that way. This guy can't overcharge the other one because his voltage is lower than full charge. This guy can't uh, overcharge because he would have to have something like a power supply or something boosting him up. So for this part of the charge, we're perfectly safe. Where we're going to start having problems 
or having to be careful is when we get into the second part and that's where we have to pump the electricity out of this and push it into this one with our power supply and we got a little 10 amp power supply here for the end of that when that time comes so what else have we got well we got our in our simp bms we have our control relays right there which we can set up to control this contactor which is a good idea to have your bms all set up we have our plugs in here and that's how we can see all this and we can see the individual cell voltages because we do have all this set up and and setting all this up is a, a bit of a process <laughs> 